The Home Assistant project came a long way and currently is the de facto standard for serious home automation. Time to show you my setup. Because of course it has some specialties. We will go through 9 hurdles and find a solution for each of them. Watching this video might save you valuable time. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. This video is not another how to install Home Assistant. It covers the following topics. My setup and the considerations that led to this decision. Tricks to get this setup working. I will concentrate on the order of tasks and will provide links to videos on how to do each task. Other decisions most Home Assistant users have to make. My verdict on Home Assistant. And a list of open tasks for the future. Let's start with the setup. Other than most standard installations, I use two Raspberry Pis instead of one for my home automation. One runs Home Assistant in its native version with its native operating system and the other runs the dockerized IoT stack. Both are integrated and managed by a common interface. Please watch video number 295 if you do not know the IoT stack project. It can save you a lot of time too. Home Assistant currently runs on this Tofu board and IoT stack on a standard 2GB Raspberry Pi 4 and an SSD drive. This is mainly because of the availability problems of Raspberry hardware. A very long time ago I backed the Home Assistant Yellow project and maybe I will get it in the near or far future. Then I will replace the Tofu board. But why did I decide to add a second box to my setup? To understand this decision we have to look at the main options of Home Assistant. Option 1. Home Assistant Operating System. It contains a minimal operating system optimized to power Home Assistant. It comes with Supervisor to manage Home Assistant Core and add-ons and is the recommended installation method. Option 2. Home Assistant Container. This is a standalone, container-based installation of Home Assistant Core, for example with Docker. Option 1 is recommended and I fear that the support for version 2 will vanish over time. In addition, you cannot use add-ons in version 2. Add-ons are very valuable in the home automation ecosystem. Unfortunately, Nabucasa, the developer of Home Assistant, decided not to use Raspberry OS for their project. And I also want to use projects like Pihole, which are not part of Home Assistant. At least not at the time of the making of this video. This is why I decided to keep my current Raspberry with all my data and integrate it into a new Home Assistant machine. The current Pi uses an SSD for performance, mainly because my InfluxDB gets bigger and bigger. With two systems I can also share the load. The Raspberries are famous for low power consumption, not for high speed. So my setup looks like that. The Tofu board runs native Home Assistant, which uses its internal MMC drive and has no additional storage. And the Raspberry with the SSD, which also has the Zigbee dongle attached. The next decision is also essential. Which tool do I use for automation? The internal Home Assistant automation or Node-RED? Looking at my current automation flows, it was clear to me. Most of my automation is not simple if this then that. They are much more complex and Node-RED is the right tool for me. Fortunately, there is a good integration of Home Assistant and Node-RED. So the two most important decisions are made. Now comes the work. You will find a link to a video on how to install Home Assistant. It is straightforward and only takes a few minutes. Suppose you do not decide to use a CM4 module, then it takes a long time. As soon as Home Assistant works, we can start with the setup. The first component I installed is a terminal. You find it in the add-on in settings. I use the community edition. As always you have to configure the add-on. 
First you must create an RSA key on your computer and insert it here. And on the info tab we find another essential slider we will use later again and again. The show in sidebar. This adds the terminal to the menu. I also leave a link to a video where you find all the needed steps in detail. The trick with the RSA key can be used outside Home Assistant and with other editors like Visual Studio Code, by the way. Next, we have to install Hacks, the Home Assistant Community Store, using the newly installed terminal. Next, we have to restart Home Assistant. This is done in Developer Tools, Restart. Always check the configuration before you hit Restart. After that, we can add Hacks in Setting, Devices and Services, Integrations. You need a free GitHub account for this task, by the way. After configuration, you can use hacks from the menu. Also here, you find a link to a video. The third important helper is the file editor. We go again to Settings, Add-ons and search for File Editor. Then hit Install and Restart Home Assistant. The reason we installed Hacks is to install the Node-RED Companion. In Hacks we go to Integrations, Explore and Download Repositories and search for Node-RED Companion and download it. After a restart, we can search for the Node-RED Companion in Settings, Devices and Services and add it. It does not require configuration. I hope you remember where Node-RED runs. Yes, on my second Raspberry. So we need to ensure Home Assistant can connect Node-RED on my IoT stack server. For that, we add a long-term token to Home Assistant. Go to your user and then to the bottom of the menu and add a long-lived access token. Name it Node-RED and copy the token to a safe place. We will need it later. Then we go to our standard Node-RED and install Node-RED Contrib Home Assistant WebSocket from the palette. We now find many new nodes particularly made to work with Home Assistant. Go to any flow and add one of the Home Assistant nodes. Add a server and fill in the IP address of your Home Assistant server. Do not forget the 8123 port and the token from before. Save these changes and deploy the node. Now you can delete it. The connection is saved and you can use all sensors and switches from Home Assistant. Here you see an example of my lights in my lab. These are Aquara PIRs and here you see my Sonoff switches. The integration is very comfortable. You get a drop down with all available sensors to choose from. You can save a lot of hassle by creating a naming scheme for your devices before you start with Home Assistant. If I type PIR, I get all PIRs listed. For example, you see Node-RED behaves precisely as if it were installed on the Home Assistant server. With one exception, it runs in a different window. This is our next task. We go back to Home Assistant and open the configuration.yaml file in the file editor. There we add a chapter called Panel iframe and these lines for Node-RED. The URL this time is pointing to the IoT stack machine. The icon comes from Simple Icons, an add-on in Hacks. It is nice to have and with your current knowledge, you should be able to install it yourself. For high productivity, we can add a few other links like ZigBee2MQTT or Portainer. Because they run on the IoT stack server, they have the same server address, just different ports. If we restart, we see all our beloved tools in Home Assistant. Cool! There is still something important missing. ESP Home for our gadgets. 
If you use Home Assistant, ESP Home is a natural choice. But if you have the Smota devices, they nicely integrate via MQTT. Because ESP Home is an official add-on, you can easily install it via Settings, Add-ons. It does not require any configuration. ESP Home has come a long way and is now super simple. Plug your ESP32 or ESP8266 port into the USB connector of the computer you are working with. Then you hit Add New Device and open ESP Home Web. Next, connect the device by selecting the correct COM port. Hit Prepare for Adoption and Make Adoptable. A base version of ESP Home is now installed and if you add your Wi-Fi credentials, your ESP is automatically added to Home Assistant. ESP Home automatically discovers if you connect an ESP32 or an ESP8266. Wonderful! If we go back to the ESP Home dashboard, we see our newly created member. It shows Discovered and we need to adopt it again. The first time we are asked for the Wi-Fi credentials, which are then stored in the secrets file. And now a significant disadvantage starts. Because the compilation runs on a Home Assistant machine, in our case a Raspberry Pi 4, the compilation is deadly slow. You can grab a cup of coffee if you run it on a Raspberry Model 3. Or better, a beer for seduction. It reminds me of when we used punch cards to program computers. We had to hand in the cards and got the results back half an hour later. Back then you learned to check your programs before you gave them for processing. Frankly, I never missed these times. But now I'm back, unless you know a trick to speed this process up. If we hit Edit, we see the current definitions of the board. For demonstration, I add the binary sensor example and select GPIO0, the standard button of my board. Hit Save and Install and upload it wirelessly because this is the fastest method. Now starts the waiting again and eventually I get the sensor integrated into Home Assistant. As the last thing, I want to flash my newly arrived Smart S26 Sonoff plug. Fortunately, they manufacture a version with Swiss blocks. Very rare. This picture shows the value of non-standardization. The simple problem of connecting three wires can be solved in many ways and creates a lot of hassle for all of us. I had to solder the usual four wires to RX, TX, 3.3 volts and ground for flashing. After connecting the wires to a USB to serial converter, I could flash the S26 the same way as the sensor before. I even found a template that I added to the YAML file of this device. Ready is the plug. Simple. There is one last item on my list. Home Assistant writes all changes in a database which, of course, resides on the Home Assistant machine. As said before, I want all data on my second Raspberry. This is easy. Just add these lines to the configuration.yaml file and create a database with this name on InfluxDB. After a restart, you get all Home Assistant logs ready for use by Grafana. I'm still struggling with my decision in one area. Whether I will use SIGP2MQTT or the native Home Assistant integration. It seems that the native integration supports more and more devices and SIGP2MQTT might no more be needed soon. My verdict. I like Home Assistant for dashboards and integration and will roll it out over time to my smartphone and the tablet in the kitchen to support daily decision making. It is one of the best projects for the Raspberry Pi and they still develop features at high speed. And this is my biggest critics. Every time you log into Home Assistant, you should update one or more components. The reasons often are minor, but the dependencies are long. For me, this is not professional, mainly because each update could have breaking changes. This adds a lot of overhead and removes time I could use for other projects. I hope they will go a more professional route and distinguish more between stable and beta releases. Most of us do not need more than two stable releases per year. 
Then the add-on and integration developers could also stick to this schedule, and all components could be tested before release. Only critical bug fixes could be released once every month. Like that, I would only get the absolutely needed updates in the list. What is still open? I want to use the energy function of Home Assistant. Unfortunately, my Huawei inverter is not yet integrated and I'm not sure I understand or agree with how Home Assistant works with power and energy. Look at this essential diagram. It shows the power flow and should be in kilowatt, like in the one from Huawei. But they decided to use kilowatt hours, which is wrong because it depicts a momentary situation. Because of these strange decisions, so far I could not get good power and energy values into Home Assistant. That is the next frontier, because it will be the basis for future energy optimization. I also have a complex method implemented in Node-RED to read the Modbus data from my inverter. There are several projects which should provide a proper integration into Home Assistant. So far, this is also a work in process for me. And of course, making functional and good-looking dashboards is a never-ending story. Here I have a lot of improvement. Currently, I only use a rudimentary version of Dwayne's dashboard. That was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.